now about the structure so it's 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 quite simple and uh, it's uh, it's kind of flows from one session to another and that's what i wanted to cover in uh, today's presentation mainly that uh, what what will be done throughout the program so we will start with the basic sessions where we discussed about the um, the uh, the structure what are the different types of protein structures what are the interactions where do you find this computational resources for protein protein interaction conformational analysis protein folding uh, some of the basic concepts how this happened and what are the computational resources associated with some of the prediction tools or some of the analysis tools not prediction here because we are doing a prediction uh, different session uh, dedicated to predictions but here we are going going to discuss more about uh, how to you know find the tertiary structure the secondary structure and build from there then uh, we are going to introduce first we are going to discuss about big molecules macro molecules and then we are going to discuss about small molecules in the same uh, prospect that uh, how to obtain and understand about small molecules where do you find such data where, what are the different ways to understand this data what are different ways to express this data in the databases how to find this and all of that so these are basic overview sessions and then from here we go to the actual databases and we start exploring those databases because it's very important to understand what is available on public repositories uh, because you want to maximize and utilize the public data and if you have uh, proprietary data that is an added uh, thing that you can do in a research project but in the terms of uh, education and learning we will be using the public repositories and where you will see that uh, people are publishing uh, almost uh, thousands of articles uh, based on the analysis that are available through the public repository and public data so here uh, there is an aspect of uh, hands on activity which would involve um, use of some proper uh, some free softwares which uh, we for which we will be able to we will be able to share with you how to install them and then show you how to work on them so also we will be sharing uh, emails throughout this training program so uh, the emails will contain information about the coursework but not only the coursework but also publications and link to all of the uh, all of the databases that we are covering and the uh, and the certain uh, repositories that we are going to use so all of this is like building up to the uh knowledge of how to uh, first of all understand about the data and information and then where to find it and uh, then how to download it and visualize it and uh, in this process we will be using a lot of case studies from rc as rcsb pdb and uh, we will be using protein data bank uh, by to uh, compare structures and to understand that what we what are the experimental structures that are available for our problem if there are no experimental structures what would be the strategy to model such uh, such cases in such cases and then uh, like how do you connect uh, from uh, different uh, protein uh, like different complex interactions because uh, now with lot of single structures the world is now moving towards the complex uh, complexes structure of complexes where more than one proteins are involved in in certain uh biological function which is greatly um, uh, are uh, are associated with uh, diseases and mutations and all so we will be discussing some case studies and then we will be working on such uh, such data using the rcsb pdb protein data bank where all the experimental structures are available so integrating this information you can also uh, work on your own uh, project here so one of the idea is to use uh, the structures that are available and we will be able to do some search uh, searches based on the queries so here i was as i was asking uh, earlier sonalika to share the project form so the project form will involve uh, that will include the description about the protein of interest and if there is literature available on it so that we can start uh, working or start developing a proposal 
now uh, after doing that like when we understand that where the structures are how they how they are uh, available and what are the ways to visualize it and uh, what uh, how how can we compare and align and see the statistics so one of the important aspect of you know comparing and writing a publication or writing a report or showing uh, this to the community requires some statistical uh, validation through tools and through different analysis so that statistical validation is something that we are going to cover in that which involves root mean square devi deviation when we compare structures in angstrong uh, uh, unit and all of that and then we are going to move to the session next session which is more on target structure prediction where we are going to use uh, the structure prediction tools so this is a critical part of drug discovery or chem informatics based drug discovery for preparing the receptor because uh, i mean one of the objective uh, what you are trying to do is you are trying to mimic uh, the uh, mimic what is happening within a cell or within uh, within a uh, system so you want to make it as close as to the actual uh, actual um, environment that in which the structure is so there are certain tools that we are going to use we are going to understand from a point of view of structural biologist if the structure is making sense and if the structure is properly modeled and uh, to do that we want to validate one of the ways to use multiple uh, multiple algorithms so we are going to go get some hands on activity on that so the session is sort of divided in this way so target identification process then uh, what are the what are the actual meanings as i was describing you about target identification and it goes in like really really depth then we have protein structure prediction why and how then comparative protein modeling and alpha fold and then there is a working session so uh, comparative protein modeling we are discussing about a template based modeling so template recognition how can we find templates and find the right kind of template because sometimes we are try like in in drug discovery there are open there are different conformations of protein right and then there are different ligand bound states and when you look at the structural data you'll find a lot of variations there how to understand that and use that in your experiment is very important so that alignment back and then when we are looking at the structure when we are looking at a model then we are looking at the different components of the secondary structure that has been modeled uh, which involves the loops that play a critical role in many of the binding processes whether it is maybe a small ion or a metal ion or or a uh, or a ligand so loop modeling side chain modeling model optimization model validation some of these aspects that we are going to discuss and then uh, use some of these modeling tools which are very famous and used utilized by uh, uh, by the entire scientific community who are working on the similar area such as modeler or alpha fold so we will start our uh, alpha fold predictions from here and understand what are the challenges limitations and uh, how can uh, this uh, the predictions uh, make sense in biological context and if not what are the solution strategies for that so after target prediction uh, the the thing that one would want to learn about is that yeah right i have now a good system good biological system to test on i have prepared a good target and the it mimics what uh, what is happening uh, it mimics almost of what is happening within so we would want to now understand that what are the solution strategies so here onwards we are discussing about the solution strategies so virtual screening is one of such strategy that is that is going to be uh, utilized and understood in this session which is the session 5 which is where we are almost at the midway so uh, like uh, virtual screening can also be optimized because the 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 databases have millions and billions of compounds small compounds and you don't want to you can't actually use all those all of those uh, molecules to screen at 
on on a single protein or a multiple targets or whatever because it's going to take forever and then also it's computationally expensive and extensive and expensive so you would want to do a lot of optimization or a lot of you know knowledge based uh, uh, screening so that's what we are going to discuss in target identification and then we have some case studies uh, which we have worked with uh, in our in um, in our research projects with uh, with uh, our collaborators one of such project is roswell park cancer research institute where we worked and uh, one of the molecule is uh, is being utilized for uh, treatment and is effective so how does this process happen what are the different ways we did the screening we utilize the top research platform and uh, then uh, based on machine learning and representation and clustering we kind of reduced uh, the chemical space to a significant space where you can actually now test test them low so you would want to reduce the chemical space from thousands and millions of compounds to maybe 100 or 500 or 1000 and then you do more intensive testing uh, virtually before finalizing top 10 or top 100 for your experiments now uh, then as i was saying that after virtual screening it comes to very uh, specialized kind of screening which is the part where we discuss about molecular docking and it's a very popular pro method and many of you might have been aware of it and might have used it already but in this uh, in the session we uh, dr puneet uh, who has already prepared a lot of sessions for you who will be participating in the program which are pre recorded sessions uh, for specific tutorials that we have uh, for this for this uh, session 6 which is practical experience in docking where we will be covering like tools such as argus lab uh, a highly uh, featured molecular modeling and graphics program Uh, which works on windows and the program contains two docking engines with a small uh, with a scoring function which is very much used which kind of gives you an estimate of binding affinity uh, so maybe ka binding association or something you can correlate it with uh, uh, in uh, for the validation like uh, if you comparing number of molecules uh, which would be the you know top 10 or how do you filter them so these are the tools that are used and useful to filter them based on their based on their binding and interactions with the even the protein molecule so this is what we have planned uh, and then we have an interesting session which is uh, again now from from structure now we are using more and more about uh, how we can do this at a scalable uh, way by applying uh, statistical uh, uh, tools such as r language or r r uh, coding so this is quite simple because all of this is done in google collab notebook which we will be sharing with you and it has all the tutorials and you can play the notebook and take up and, uh, and do the different steps and this is you know why this is we are doing this this is like you did the virtual screening where you identified from a large library of molecules into and get leads so after getting leads you you got maybe top 10 or top 20 leads and you you are looking at the top poses and you're analyzing and you're che checking the interaction but can you optimize it further so for optimization what you need is something that are uh, that medicinal chemist are expert in that chemist are working uh, working in that changing uh, the different orientation changing functional groups and doing more drug optimization so this session actually helps in those who are uh, into drug optimization so chem informatics and using r Uh, and those google collab notebooks you can generate different conformations and change it by uh, by just changing few sentences or the group information in the in the notebook so all of this is quite uh, automated 
and it's really easy to use and that's one of the objective for creating such a curriculum so that it's easy to use and implement and later once you gain expertise and more and more expertise you'll be more easy and comfortable to go for advanced uh, research so um, after this we have a uh, discussion on a case study so this is a case study based uh, um, session uh by one of the experts from in industry to discuss about the drug discovery process the high throughput process the structural biology screening and some of the case studies uh, which is to discovery of a kinase inhibitor for lung cancer so we will have a pharma expert uh, from from the industry discussing about this uh, after that we we are in during this process are going to discuss or share with you a lot of publications that would make sense for you to develop research ideas and encourage you to develop research ideas if you don't have already one uh, so in this uh, uh, towards the ninth session and we are towards the uh, last three sessions of the program we are going to discuss advancements in uh, ai based molecular drug discovery so in in this session we are going to deep dive in more in um, into the alpha fold predictions so alpha fold uh, you know in a way uh, they have already predicted 200 million structures uh, uh, this is the news that i've heard like couple of weeks ago uh, so all the uniprot uniprot protein sequences are now modeled so you can uh, simply utilize those and then based on uh, Uh, all of that there are some limitations still they that uh, you know that alpha fold is not able to solve so what are those limitations uh, for example the structures for which there is no information at all like noble structures obviously alpha fold can't solve the structures uh, so, uh, give you solution for that because it does not have the training or the training on such data so what are the solution strategies and what are the different uh, case studies in terms of how pharma and computational biology companies are utilizing this uh, ai in molecular drug discovery how academy and industry is utilizing this ai in drug discovery and how we can as a researcher or as a scientist or as a student uh, can uh, incorporate or get some of this technology in and use it for our own research uh, many of them open source or if we can develop something using the resources that are with our mentors so um, as i was telling you about uh, the uh, ai in drug discovery so uh, as alpha fold i was telling you that they have now open it open it for open access this open access uh, Mm, uh, open access database is available for all of us and we will be downloading and we will be looking at that so some of the limitations that i was telling you in the previous and to the previous slides are listed out here actually so different versions of alpha fold and then there are uh, in biology you will find uh, some proteins are functional as uh, as multi multimers so how do we do complexes so i was telling you that this is a challenge and uh, this is something that uh, people are trying to solve uh, especially structural biologists who are working on specific problems especially working with research groups who have a biological background and they are conducting experiments and knowing from the uh, from the illusion that what is the what is the weight and based on the molecular weight uh, how many um, how if it is a multimeric protein or there are different ways to know that so from that information can we can can we produce those models so again to the same point that i've been discussing for a while the correctness of the model is pretty important and it should include all the biological information insights that we know of so the more we can build that uh, closer to the biological information the more the chances are for us to get the right kind of result so alpha fold and that and then mutations there's a huge huge challenge with mutations so i've been working on many projects which involves mutation obviously with covid and all the uh, 
um cancer mutations so how do you understand what are the structural changes how how do you capture the structural changes because what you are seeing is just a snapshot is not the complete picture so here the you know uh, application of molecular dynamic simulations and uh, uh, normal mode analysis and then different types of uh, whole cell simulations comes into picture and that would be maybe a research topic or as a research that one can do so uh, as we've been discussing about uh, the same thing so in the context the case study that we will be discussing in this uh, will be a pharma company who is utilizing the information uh, and the uh, deep learning processes for not only screening and all of that but for new molecular new molecule generation using graph theory and using deep learning so how they are utilizing this and uh what are the different uh, solutions that they have come up with because uh, many of this are ex- we thought many of these are experimental but what are the different uh, situation in the market if it is it is uh, it, it is going to be successful or not if it is what stage it is in so those are the different uh, those are the those, that's the case study that we have uh, that we are going to discuss and then uh, we have uh, the session on uh, data warrior which will be discussed towards the end of the program where which is to you know understand all of this so we i uh, just discussed that calculation of key chemical properties generation of new chemical compounds and identification of chemical representation so before that we discussed about the case study so that you know that what is the application and then you ha- you are excited to learn this yourself so uh, that it would be what we are going to cover in the advanced chemistry informatics session uh, which is the last uh, i think uh, one of the last sessions and then we have some of the case studies uh, uh, which is very important so uh, at the beginning of all of this we will be start we will be will be working on um, we will be working on the project form so if many any of you have a project idea and you want to work on a project uh next session we are going to discuss about the research projects so what are the chem informatics research projects how to design a chem informatics research projects what are the different stages challenges and limitation and then the omics logic research fellowship so this is towards the end so anyone who has been working on a project or, or would want to develop a project and work on that can work with me we can work with dr raghav can work with the industry experts dr puneet uh, which would be through the omics logic research fellowship so this is the 11th uh, session uh, more about uh, what are the next steps that one can take so we have several of these case studies integration of omics data into research projects pharma pro- projects for bio biomolecular or biomarker discovery so these all come boils down to the structure of the protein and understanding so these have the chem informatics component and then the covid-19 case study uh, where we are discussing understanding the different uh, binding uh, domains and then strategizing based on the structure and uh, what are the different uh, uh, ways to look at infectious disease research so one of the things that we have been discussing is about all of this in the respect of uh, protein structure so protein structure as it's a um, organic molecule with a lot of ke- chemicals uh, forming the structure and there is also a component of electrostatic uh, distribution the charge distribution the hydrophobicity what are the different um, phys- uh, uh, physiologic or physical properties of the amino acid and how does that make a difference when it comes down to you know um binding so this is all knowledge based and this can be gained through the simple structural analysis by utilizing some of the tools that the structural biologists or computational structural biologists utilized and uh, i will be able to share some of my knowledge and information that i've gained and worked on uh, and pu- uh, on the publications that i've uh, been able to publish so far so i'll be able to help in that and uh, then we have the last session which is more about uh, the Uh, about a case study that what are the examples of successful and fra- failed drug 
discovery development by one of the um, industry experts uh, to know and understand that what are the uh, different things that we have to look into when we are discussing about uh, drug discovery and what people have done and what they have learned so far from this experience so that's uh, that's the entire structure of this uh, program and i hope that many of you would be interested in doing so uh, throughout the training program